R. Kelly is a former American singer, songwriter, actor, and record producer. I say former not because he's passed on or anything, but because, well. A federal grand jury has indicted Kelly on 13 counts, including child pornography, enticement of a minor, and obstruction of justice. Yeah, that. Look, at some point, R. Kelly was one of the most successful R&B producers in the music game, and at his peak, his net worth would have been in the $100 million range. But over the years, his many, many legal problems made that nest egg take a hit, reducing it by tens of millions of dollars. These days, reports suggest that he owes more money than he can afford to pay back. But hey, R. Kelly has owned some gorgeous homes in his day, everywhere from Chicago to Atlanta, and we're gonna check them out. In these videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Robert Sylvester Kelly who we know as R. Kelly has been credited with helping to redefine R&B and hip-hop earning him nicknames like the king of R&B and leading him to release a ton of hit tracks like Ignition, The World's Greatest and many more. But he's also been the subject of intense controversy since the 1990s which I'm sure you already know all about and in 2019 he was arrested on a long list of federal charges, 18 to be exact. Prior to this, in 2012, the IRS reported that R. Kelly owed as much as $5 million back in unpaid taxes, which would lead him to losing his gigantic mansion located in Chicago in an area known as Olympic Fields. Furthermore, he was evicted from two different homes that he owned in Atlanta, Georgia a few years later, after refusing to pay more than $30,000 in back rent and fees. With his real estate portfolio taking a massive hit, Kelly moved himself into Chicago's Trump Tower and battened down the hatches. Unfortunately for him, it didn't last long. Six months later, he was arrested and on his way to the Metropolitan Correctional Center in downtown Chicago, which is where he calls home right now as he awaits his multiple trials. Hey guys, it's Kara, and for today's house tour, I'm reporting on a celebrity you guys requested. This time, we're taking a look at a few different homes of the infamous R. Kelly here for you on Famous Entertainment. Whether it's his music or his crimes that are well documented in series like Surviving R. Kelly, people are fascinated by this man's story. Today, I'm going to take you inside some of his estates and give you a taste of how he lived. As you know, here we talk about celebrity houses, but have you ever wondered what David Dobrik spent on his Iron Man suit or about Conor McGregor's million dollar watches? We recently started a brand new channel, Famous Fashion, where myself and some other hosts are reporting on all things celebrity fashion. Join us and be one of the first to subscribe. You don't want to miss this. That's not even the only watch McGregor picked up during his recent shopping spree. He also bought another timepiece from Jacobs & Co, this time in a more X-rated flavor. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and we can chat there. All right, let's get into this video. Back in 1997, things were going great for R. Kelly. His hit song, I Believe I Can Fly, was still tearing up the airwaves, getting tons of play, and he was making enough cash to blow a whole bunch of it on this beautiful mansion located in Olympia Fields in Chicago for $3.5 million. The community sits about 45 minutes away from the downtown area, and Kelly had the home custom built to suit his tastes. The entire house features more than 14,000 square feet of space and fully landscaped acres situated behind an iron and stone gate with 12 foot tall concrete encased fencing. Inside you'll find formal and informal lounging and entertainment areas, as well as four fireplaces, six bedrooms, eight full baths, as well as six half baths. It also features a colossal kitchen with a center island, high-end commercial grade appliances, and a super tall ceiling with heavy wood beams running across. Not too far away from there, the double height family room is adjoined to the home theater, as well as a wood paneled room with a fireplace that most likely acts as a library. There's also a jungle themed indoor swimming pool, which when R. Kelly was trying to move off of the home, he hyped up on the listing as a full on tropical experience. I don't know, that might be overselling it more than a little. Outside, the estate borders the Olympia Field Country Club and includes a gated circular drive with a secondary motor court and acres of lawns with trees, an outdoor tennis and basketball court, a private pond with fountains, a detached multi-car garage, and whatever this thing is. Maybe I don't want to know. In 2011, it was reported that 
R. Kelly stop making payments on his remaining $2.9 million mortgage for this home. At the time, people seemed to think it was a strategy on his part to get the lender to renegotiate the loan. It didn't work. Kelly lost the home to foreclosure, and it was later sold at auction for a mere $587K. After losing his home in his native Chicago, R. Kelly moved south and took to renting two properties in the same neighborhood known as Johns Creek, located in Duluth, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. One of the properties is a large mansion style estate, while the other is a smaller family style home. The larger home located on Old Homestead Trail was his primary residence. Kelly rented this property for $10,000 a month. Built in 2000, this 9,000 square foot estate is built on the top of 2.5 acres and features extras like its own batting cage and a tenant's court that Kelly transformed into a basketball court. Inside the home, you'll find luxurious amenities like a home theater and a cigar bar. The majority of the ceilings around the home are over 12 feet high and the floors are made out of French limestone with elegant details featured in the living room, dining room, and paneled study. The kitchen has been updated to include stainless steel appliances as well as quartzite countertops. Further inside the home, the family room has one of the home's seven different fireplaces as well as a rich beamed wood ceiling. The master suite is located on the main floor and has its very own spa bath along with his and her walk-in closets. And as much as I may want to, I'm going to hold back from making any trapped in the closet jokes. But needless to say, you could get lost in the size of these things. Upstairs are five more bedrooms, each with their own private terrace. There's also an enormous den and home theater up here, which sits over top of the four car garage. Moving on to the second, smaller home, Kelly rented this far more unassuming place located on St. Devon Crossing. Built in 1992, this 2,348 square foot home sits in a cul-de-sac and has four bedrooms along with 2.5 bathrooms. According to records, Kelly was paying $3,000 a month for this property, which is just two miles away from the larger home. It features custom tile flooring, a renovated master bedroom and bath combo, alongside an upgraded kitchen with granite countertops and stainless steel appliances to go alongside the large Eden breakfast area. The family room offers plenty of space and windows to let in that Georgia sunshine, and there's an extra room located on the main floor that would be perfect for a home office. Meanwhile, out back is a private yard that's fenced off to keep out any unwanted attention. Speaking of unwanted attention, R. Kelly has faced his fair share of it while living in these two homes. First off, at the end of 2017, both of these homes were broken into and looted. Even worse, the culprit was a close personal friend of R. Kelly's named Alfonso Walker, who ransacked the homes over that Thanksgiving weekend. That's what happens when you let people too close to you. This is what happens. According to reports, Walker hired movers to clean out both houses and then sold the contents at a price of 6,000 K per room. The theft was discovered by a cleaning lady in late November and when Kelly finally got around to checking things out, he posted his findings to Instagram. Walker would turn himself into police only days later. If you ask me, it's more than a little curious that a man who was facing a whole ton of back taxes mysteriously had his homes broken into and stripped bare by a close personal friend when he wasn't home. But hey, I'm not a detective. Although it gets even weirder when you find out that after this incident happened, R. Kelly simply stopped paying rent at both properties and left the homes behind. I guess he thinks that's how real estate works. When the property management company inspected the homes, they found extensive damage that was beyond normal wear and tear. After evaluating it, they asked Kelly for payment, who refused to do so. That forced them to file a suit against Kelly looking for more than $200,000 in damages. Of course, if that was the worst thing that ever happened in these two homes, then I think we'd all be the happier for it. But we know that isn't the case. Both of these homes took center stage in the crimes that would be charged against the entertainer. Earlier that year, just before the homes were broken into, news of R. Kelly's reported sex cult took the world by storm. It's all pretty depressing stuff, and it's the reason why R. Kelly is now calling the Metropolitan Correctional Center in downtown Chicago home as he awaits his trials to begin in September of 2021. Opening in 1975, this prison features 20 stories and has a rooftop exercise yard. Each cell is designed with floor to ceiling slit windows, which are seven feet tall by five inches wide, which gives the building an extremely unique look, somewhat reminiscent of an old computer punch card. Because the windows are so narrow, they don't require bars, and the cells themselves were designed to resemble sailboat cabins with built in hardwood beds and desks. I tell you all this simply to give you a taste of where I think R. Kelly will probably be spending the rest of his natural born life, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right. 
right guys, I'm gonna bring this house tour to a wrap right here. What did you think of the different homes of R. Kelly? If I'm being totally honest with you, considering what went on in those homes, I really don't wanna live in any one of them. Too much bad juju. These days, his former homes in Georgia are looking all spiffy and new, but that Chicago mansion has fallen into a state of huge disrepair. It's super creepy to look at, and we'll have to wait and see if anyone ever bothers renovating it. In the meantime, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Bye.